what is going on guys we are back with another video now today what i'm gonna go do is do some maintenance work on the excavator right now it's at a job site in tomball texas and pretty much i'm gonna show you what i normally do when the machine's out on a job the, the stuff i uh, gotta take care of so i got the dodge dakota here obviously with the air compressor and that's so i can blow out the radiator blow out the the air filter also got some grease we're gonna be greasing it up and uh, a little bit of oil there in case i'm low on oil i'm gonna check the coolant check the hydraulic fluid if i need some hydraulic i'll just run to an all riley's get some hydraulic top it off make sure the machine is good to go for the next job site and this is a uh, regular stuff that i like to do every week if possible sometimes i can't but i try to do it weekly and pretty much that's it so we're gonna take the dakota this truck here uh my dad used to drive it from the house to the yard and the yard to the house and whenever we needed the compressor we would use it it's a it's a little nice truck wrapping some of the the decals here trailero the link will be in the description below you guys already know to to my store so y'all can check out the hats the decals we got the t100 decal the gr trucking right there on the corner and on this side i've got the trucker sticker t100 with the redesigned logo and then we rep in texas large car boys but that's it guys let's go ahead and take off inside of the truck i have a few other things napkins i've got my grease gun gloves the batteries jug of water for myself a sandwich with them snacks you know you gotta have some snacks but let's get to it let's go ahead and head out to tomball Pulling up to the subdivision now. Access granted. Uh, pretty much on this subdivision what they are doing is building the pad where the house is going to go it's a subdivision and there's a lot of construction going on new houses being built left and right here at the job site as y'all can see the excavator i'm going to move it forward so it can sit flat that way i can check the fluids properly but let me show y'all on this door over here This is how you check the, the hydraulic. So bucket, the boom has to be like that for you to be able to check it accurately. And then in here, you have the, the meter. Take a look at it. The way the bucket and the boom is, now I can check the hydraulic and make sure that it is up to its level. And it actually is. It's right above 
the line that's in between not sure if y'all can tell now i'm gonna jump on top of the excavator and check the the oil and the coolant so i'm gonna bring some of these napkins and we'll see how the the oil is on the machine there's that pad that we're working on Romero shooting the laser right now so coolant it's actually full as you can see the full line is here the coolant's a little bit higher than that so it's pretty good and now to check the oil I gotta pull the dipstick Oil's good. Now I'm gonna leave the, the engine bay door open so when I start blowing the radiator, which is here, I can get the dust to come up from this door. And I'll finish off by greasing the, the excavator. Now let's clean the radiator. It's not that hard. Just gotta come here. Got the blow gun right here.
Now I'm gonna start greasing the machine and I'm gonna start with the bucket, the boom. So I'm gonna get on the machine. Later off, and I'm gonna start with this top piece of the of the boom. So there's the pin right here. Got to grease it there. Then you have this pin that runs all the way across. Grease fitting right there. Same thing on this side. Grease fitting right there. And then down here where the cylinder is, the top of the cylinder, you got another pin. So got to grease it right there. That's already three points to grease. Well, actually four, one, two, three, and then four on the other side. Three pins, four points to grease. And after that, bring the bucket out and I'll continue with the bucket. Got to get my battery. So this box of grease here, $40, and it has 10 tubes. Grease is pretty expensive, it's not that cheap. I just have to bleed it, I can bleed it right here. We're good to go now. Here's a screwdriver. And I'm gonna show you guys why I carry a screwdriver with my grease gun. Now that I did the top, we're gonna move into the bucket. And here's where the screwdriver comes in handy. I'm gonna show you why. I use it to clean out where the fittings are. That way it's not dirty when I'm getting grease on there. So there's one, and then this one. Got some dirt right there. So this pin that goes to the bottom of the cylinder has three fittings to grease. One, two, three. And obviously it's just one pin. Now the pin that's down here only has two.
two, three, four, five. And then over here, there's two more. This one goes to this pin. And then this bottom one goes to the pin down here. Eight actually, I forgot about this side. Eight fittings I'm gonna be greasing. I just finished greasing the bucket and I already went through my first tube of grease. I just changed it again. So pretty much the top part of the excavator and the bucket takes a tube of grease. And right here you can see, I just kind of put grease on there until it starts coming out from the sides. There's grease that started to come out through the bottom. That's why I stopped there. There's no point of filling it up with just so much grease that's not going to do nothing. Right here, as you can see, the grease started to come out. And that's pretty much more than enough. Now what I'm going to do is come over here and grease these cylinders from the bottom. There's a fitting right here. And there's also one down here on the rotary gear of the excavator so i'm gonna put a little bit of grease there normally i tell these guys to grease it whenever there's two people here so somebody can be putting grease as the machine is rotating and also i haven't done it lately but every once in a while there's a uh there's a little plate you can unbolt in here and put grease directly into the gear from from the center piece of the machine well you can't see it now because there's just so much stuff in here also let me tell you why the the machine is so dirty the way it is a hydraulic hose busted not too long ago and hydraulic went everywhere so that's why the the boom and the machine is just so filthy i just got told that tomorrow morning i got to take it to a house demo back in houston so while it's over there, I'm going to call my guy to go uh, clean it up, put a lot of degreaser on it. And that way uh, the machine can look better because ever since that hydraulic hose busted, we uh, haven't washed it. And I try to wash it every three, four weeks to have it somewhat clean. But even though it's a demolition excavator, there's no way to keep them clean. Now, like I said, I'm going to do those fittings right there. So there's three. And then over here on this side, you have five more that go to these big pins. Well, it's actually one pin that runs all the way across. But one of them lubricates this side, the other one the other side. And two of those also lubricate the top of the piston. And one of them also that top piston at the very, very top. The last grease fitting is back here under the machine on the back side of the gear. That's pretty much it when it comes to greasing the excavator. Nothing too hard to do. Anybody can do it. You just gotta make sure you just don't miss any of those grease fittings. Because like you guys saw, there is a few of them.
here's a trash bag that I brought because one thing about me, I like cleaning up my mess wherever I go, whatever I do. I don't like uh, leaving none of the stuff that I brought on job site. So I used two grease tubes, which are right here. I'm gonna put them in this bag and I'll throw them away whenever I get home or to the yard. Put them in a dumpster. I'm gonna start putting my tools away. Another thing, I always like to carry uh, a knife with me. You never know when you'll need it. Now, another thing I can't do because I'm by myself right now is add some grease to the tracks. The fitting for that is right here. And the way I put grease on the tracks, they're not that bad right now. They could use a little bit of grease though. Not sure if y'all can see they're a little hanging. But what I would do there, have somebody sit on the cab, put the bucket on this side, lift up the track and move the track slowly as I'm putting grease on that fitting. That's pretty much the only way that I can get the grease to go onto the tracks because it's pretty hard. It's uh, If I don't do that, there's no way the grease is going in. And I would like to stretch them just a little bit more, not a whole lot, because they are hanging a little bit, but they can't be too tight either. Now, like you guys see, I'm wearing this Trailero embroidered t-shirt with unit 75 on the side T800 on the back and there's a few left on my website Now the only sizes available are Larger sold out extra larger sold out. There's only 2x. So for my big fellas Check it out Trailero on the front T800 on the back and unit 75 on the side Badass badass shirts very comfortable. I love these shirts and what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna take off a little bit of that excess of grease it has near the pistons also i got a video on youtube of when i added all the leds to the excavator which are very bright very very bright leds i bought at uh, the chrome stop with freddy another thing this is not something that has to be done weekly especially if the machine uh works every day the operators they know that they have to grease the machine every day especially the stuff that uh has a lot of movement like the bucket for example but i like to come every week and i'm the only one with a compressor so i'm the only one that pretty much blows a radiator and i go through it detailed and grease every single every single fitting that the that the machine has and I mean, you guys know sometimes the operators, you know, just trying to get the job done. They will not grease it or forget this, forget that. They'll miss a day or, or two. So that's why I like coming myself and doing this myself. Because at least now, you know, I'm going to leave and I'm going to know, okay, well, I went. I checked the machine. Fluids were good. I greased it up. And I don't have to worry about it as much. But yeah, I really need to get the guys to come and watch the, the excavator. Detail, detail it very, very good. Check that out. When I was greasing the pins up here, I'm pretty sure y'all weren't able to see exactly what I was doing. But as you can see, there is one two three four five fittings and the very bottom one if you follow the the little line it comes to this side of the pin second one goes to the other side now this third one is pretty much that line you see there go to the the cylinder and the fourth one goes all the way to the middle. You can see it in between those hydraulic lines. Goes to the cylinder too. And the last one is this one right here. So 
so that's where all that grease goes to. A lot of old grease. I like to take all of this off. And like I told you guys, I already got word that I gotta move this excavator to a house tomorrow in Spring Branch. So I'll be coming to pick it up. And tomorrow when I do come, I forgot to bring my, my shovel. Normally I carry the shovel with me to clean out the tracks a little bit, leave all of this dirt here. But that's pretty much it. There's the Cat 316, it's time to head out of here. I just got another call, so tomorrow I'm gonna head out to uh, Magnolia, a little bit further out, maybe 20 minutes up north from where we're at, and I already have another machine to move, so I'm gonna do that one. I'm gonna try to get there by 6.30 in the morning, and that will mean that I can get back here around 7.30, 7.45, and pick this one up, take it back to Houston, so that worked out pretty well. Two runs, and, uh, and one shot, gonna be that's gonna be pretty good i like when stuff like that works out you know because um the way fuel is i spend less fuel and make more money don't forget the link will be in the description below to my merchandise shop gr trucking rock the merch another thing i wanted to touch with you guys is um what the heck it's uh something that's been going on this is going on for a minute too so I just don't want none of y'all to get scammed or think that I'm trying to reach out to, to anybody. So my buddy sent me a screenshot of a comment they made on one of his uh, comments on my video, which that comment came from another profile that looked like it was mine. It had my picture and everything. Man, they've been doing fake pages like that already for months. And I keep on blocking them, reporting them. I guess they do more. And they're just trying to, you know, scam people so don't fall for that you know there's there's bad people out here believe me the only thing i will ever tell you guys to do is click on that link and shop to my store get some merchandise but that's it other than that i won't ask for no personal information i won't tell you to send me a message on whatsapp i don't even use whatsapp so so don't fall for none of that i'm letting you guys know right now and i'm trying to show you guys this picture so y'all can see what i'm talking about because y'all have probably even seen it too where is it where is it all right right here so check it out my buddy sent me this uh this picture right the screenshot actually and as you can see he uh commented something on my video of the magnetic wireless led lights and then it says whatsapp me at there's a number and it says hi thanks for watching and always supporting this channel let's talk now for more profitable insight with my truck's picture right there so same profile picture but guys that is not me i will never tell you guys to do something like that so don't fall for it if you ever see a comment like that on my channel on my uh comment section report it because it's not me most of the time i'll just like and comment back thank you or if people ask me something i'll answer back i'll probably you know every once in a while tell somebody hey you know uh send me a uh, a message on instagram if you want to ask me something or talk about something because i've done it but my only instagram is gr truck and demolition llc and like you guys uh know uh, a few weeks ago i got hacked they stole my facebook account they're still using it that's that's messed up man it's pretty messed up you know it's always uh good people that stuff like that happens too but it's part of the game i'm not worried about it because i know what i'm doing i'm doing nothing but good stuff i'm working and at the end of the day that social media stuff you know it's it's something separate from it but right now i'm only on instagram and tiktok at gr truck and demolition llc and we'll also my youtube channel but thanks to everybody that's been supporting me from the beginning to everybody that's joining uh joining to the group liking the videos you know it means a lot to me because i worked hard for this i really have so it kind of hurts i gotta start again from the bottom with my instagram you know building up my audience because i would put a lot of effort into making cool videos posting them and pretty much now i have to start all over 
But like I said, you know, it's my buddy once told me, you know, it can run so smooth for a certain amount of time until you start getting into issues and problems. And you know what? He's right. He was right because that uh, comment I showed you guys, it was a fake profile somebody made. And this is not the first time somebody has made something like that on, on YouTube. They've uh, done it before where they're like, hey, telegram me. I don't even know what the hell telegram is. But telegram me at this. And all they do is pretty much uh, incorporate my name onto the, the channel they, they create. And go from there. But, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't realize it. And they fall for it. But with that being said, once again, thank you guys for joining me on another video, like always, for the, the support you guys have been giving me since the beginning. To everybody that reaches out to me, that keeps up with uh, with my, my social media pages, the platforms. I try to answer every message that I get, like on Instagram and TikTok and all the comments on, on YouTube. But it's just so many sometimes that I can't get to all of them. But... I know uh, some of you guys might notice that I reply like four weeks after, three months later, and that's pretty much when I start getting to those messages. So it's not that I don't want to, it's just that's when I get to them. We just got here to Spring Branch. It was a very tight turn right there on that intersection to come in here. But I made it in. There's cars parked on the side. This is a residential neighborhood, so cars everywhere. This car was in the way, so I just had to get in the middle of the road. But I'm gonna be unloading. That's Andrew right there. Cat 316. Here. Yeah. Let me unload it real quick. It's recording. Show them the house, tell them what we're gonna do there. Alright. We're totally gonna demolish this house. Good wood. Separate this good wood. House was burnt down for a little bit burnt. Just the roof. It's gonna come down right now with this guy. Put this right about here. One moment. I gotta get to work. Alright. Don't worry, put this. There. Right about here. Oh, dude. Is it on? I guess it is.
might have tried to. Uh... Got Romero here with me. Did you guys everybody... need some residential demo? Send me a message on Instagram. Site work, land Site clearing. Site work, land clearing. Need we can stuff? do it. We got the equipment for it. We got the excavator. We uh, got dozers. Whatever we need, Excuse we can you. get it. And this is brother Andrew right there. He's a mastermind of the team. <laughs> the mastermind. <laughs> but check out this house. It's going down. Now I just hope that it's not too hard to get out of here because these neighborhoods, they're full of cars. There's cars everywhere. So to make that turn, there's a stop sign in the corner. I had to literally get on the grass of that house and I was inches away from that Nissan Altima. So I was very close to it. Put the airbags up. There's the excavator. But that's pretty much it. I already did a load before this one. So this is my second load. And it's already, I think it's 8.30 in the morning right now. I did my other load early. That'll be it for this video, guys. Thank you for joining me on another one. Don't forget, click the link, shop your trucking, get your gear. I have a lot of cool new stuff coming, so be on the lookout for that.